Well, it's January, but I haven't the time to plan a rhyme that goes with Fort George's Farmer's Annuary. Hey, y'all. I'm Matthew. Again. I know. Is there anybody else ever going to show up in front of this camera? I suppose, to be fair, you could go to any of the dozens of other quite good beer channels out there, but I'm happy you're at mine. And hey, while you're here, make sure to drop a, a, a like and a subscribe below, you know, so you'll see next time I post without me having to hound you on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it is I've been hounding you to watch. Um, anyways, today is early January, and it is a very nice... I, I mean, I see blue sky over my head in Washington State in January, so very nice. Eh, a bit cool, but eh, that's livable. Um, and today I'm going to be drinking one that I've had in my fridge for a little while. This is the last of the four-pack. It is Fort George's Farmer's Annuary, which is a collaboration between uh, Skagit, no, Indy Hops, Skagit Valley Malting, and Fort George. I don't know if I've had any other Fort George beers, but, um, or I'm pretty sure I have had some other Fort George beers. I don't know if, if I've reviewed any. Um, it's got a very nice picture of what looks like a, a three-toed sloth hanging on the, uh, the hop vines and a goose with a paddle of some sort standing next to um, barley or wheat. Uh, I'm not sure what the paddle has to do with with harvesting wheat, but um, yeah. It is an unfiltered IPA, and so far I've enjoyed it quite a lot. And I hope to uh, maybe explain a little bit why. <laughs> so it pours a hazy lemon color, definitely. Um, I don't know if you ever had well, like honey lemon tea, you know, water and, and lemon juice and, and honey. Um, this is maybe to the dark side of that, but that is what comes to mind when I look at this. It's definitely unfiltered. That's not to say it's hazy. A hazy IPA is different from an unfiltered IPA. It's an unfiltered IPA. I don't believe it's a double or an imperial. Um, I don't see an AB. Oh, there we are. It's a 7%, so no, it's not imperial. It's not a double. Just a regular old run-of-the-mill single IPA. Single IPA. But, uh... It smells... It smells round. And a little bit square. And possibly a bit octahedral as well. Um... I would associate the smell of this with um, pan-dimensional beings, definitely. Yeah, no. uh, round. So, almost like a a jelly, like a, a not not sweet, but but thick. Not not cloying, just just substantial. Um, like orange gelatin kind of, or orange jello, but not artificial. Like it's a good. Uh, orange or tangerine or lemon it's a good mixed citrus uh, flavor but there's a there's a thickness to it and now that I've got that in my mind I can't smell anything else <laughs> let's try to build up some other smells here it smells juicy it smells very inviting I'll say that that's it's a very inviting smelling IPA Let's see how it tastes. This has a very good balance of the maltiness and the hoppiness for an IPA. There's um, probably a couple different kinds of hops going on here based on what I'm tasting. There's definitely a, a citrus finish, but before that, there is a, a really nice bready character to this, which you might not get in a regular, a normal IPA, which are 
all about the hops, about the hops, no malty, no whatever. Um, so this has a maltiness, that breadiness, and that kind of tends to, or seems to me in my mind, to match with the, the thickness, the body of the smell. But even with that, you still have this really nice citrus, fruity, possibly pear and grape as well, um, playing their parts. This fruitiness that goes through with that breadiness. And then you finish with this um, like lemon peel kind of malt bite at the end. And then that fades pretty quickly and you're, not, you're not left with this uh, very simple but pleasant uh, just kind of peel bitterness, but it's really small. Like you, you get the, the, the chunk of peel towards the end and then it, it fades really quickly and you're just left with this hint. It has a really nice, kind of a, a short um, a short drink and the finish is really, really light, really subtle. Very drinkable, very drinkable. It tastes less hoppy than a lot of other IPAs. It's not a punchy in the face with the hops thing. Now, granted, the beer does say drink fresh, and it's been in my fridge for probably two months now, this last can, that is. Um, but even from the outset, it had a... It's, this beer has always had a very nice balance of the malt and the hops, which I personally find very pleasing. I enjoy that. I like being able to taste the malts along with the beer, along with the hops. And when they balance the two, when both are, are when you can find both in the beer, I like that. So, you know, this is an IPA made for me. Perhaps in the finish, there's a little bit of, I don't know, there's, there's some other kind of subtle fruitness that fruitiness that's that's coming out more than just the orange peel and I'm, I'm not sure how I would describe it but it's like it's kind of poking its head through and I, re I really I will really just have to drink it a few more times you know for for that to come to mind because of course Sorry, is it a good thing to laugh at your own jokes? I don't know. I laugh at my jokes. <laughs> Make of that what you will. <laughs> Anyways, this is a tasty, balanced, pleasant IPA that takes you through a, a series of pleasant stops that all kind of play together very nicely and taste really good. And I enjoy that about this beer. This is a beer that I enjoy a lot. It is a limited release, so I'm not sure how how easily you'll be able to find it or anything, or if you'll even be able to find it, period. It is a limited release, Farmer's Annuary by Fort George Brewing. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'm Matthew, I've been chewing the brew, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.